in, in, in Eastern Europe, the right wing is fascist and communist, and the left wing is small d democratic. Now, it should make you question people who only run on labels. Be careful of labels. Don't let anybody confuse you. Make sure you listen and cut through labels to find out what is at the heart of his or her or their political platform. Uh, but I asked the mayor of Moscow, the mayor of, uh, his name is Popov, is that a great name for mayor? <laughs> yeah, be Popov. Uh, and the mayor of uh, St. Petersburg, Anatoly Suchek. How did you get elected? How did you do it? That's a great story. In essence, they told me they went around all the state-owned housing. In the United States, we call it public housing. They call it state-owned housing. It's run by the apparatchiks of the Communist Party. The KGB listens in on your telephone calls. The windows are in disrepair. The building and brick and mortar are in disrepair. Graffiti. It looks like the worst hellhole that you can imagine, and that's where most of the people who are below the bourgeoisie, of course, the bourgeoisie in Russia are the communist apparatchiks. They're like Make a long story short, they said, well, Mr. Kemp, we went around all the public housing or state-owned housing, and we told people that if we got to be elected mayor, people would be able to own their own home. We told them that we would develop a legal system that would give them the right to buy and sell and make a profit, to leave it to their children in their estate. And then we told people that we would eliminate any tax on the gain of an asset invested in downtown St. Petersburg or downtown Moscow it would hire people off of the state socialist-run industries and put them to work in the private enterprise system. I said, Mr. Mayor, where did you get these radical ideas? <laughs> you got it. I said, Mr. Kim, we got it from you guys, from Ronnie Reagan, from the Republican platform of 1980, 1984, 1988, 1992. I'll tell you what, these are the ideas that are sweeping Eastern and Central Europe. Isn't it ironic? America is capturing the whole world. The fastest growing part of China is the Pearl River Delta, which is an enterprise zone. Yeah. Deng Xiaoping eliminated any tax on workers and investors who put their businesses and put their uh, assets to work in this uh, Guangdong province of China, now called the Pearl River Delta. Half of all the manufacturing in China is coming from about 10% of the geographical area of China. Listen, free enterprise and rewards and incentives and opportunity work. It works around the world. The Bible says what profit the man to gain the world and lose his soul, but the same thing is true for a nation. Collectively, we have a soul. The soul of America is at stake in this decade of the 90s. The soul of America is in what we do about poverty. The soul of America is in what we do to bring our minority men and women and immigrant men and women into this great dream and tapestry that we call the American dream. The soul of America is in what we do for our families and protect our children, both born and those not yet born. The soul of America is in what we do about our inner cities, about ghettos and barrios where people are, le are left behind. Now let me say this as clearly as I possibly can. The Good Shepherd reminds us when he left 99 to seek out one stray lamb. And he proved his love not only of the lamb, he also proved his love of the 99. Because any one of those 99 would have known at some given point in their life, they too could have strayed. They too could have been left out. They too could have been left behind. Now we want in a country, I say this as an old quarterback, you can't have a football team that separates on the way down the field. You gotta all win together or lose together as a team. This country is a team, we're a family. We have a stake in each other's welfare and well-being. You see, the word welfare should not be a pejorative. It should, be, it should not be a negative. The liberals have turned welfare into kind of a dependent syndrome. But welfare means well-being. If you care about the well-being of your friend, if you care about the well-being of your children, you want them to be independent of mama and papa. You want them to stand on their own two feet. You want them to develop their God-given potential. And very frankly, ladies and gentlemen, the liberals have distorted the word welfare to where welfare today means that we stand around uh, 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 making sure that people are dependent uh, upon this welfare plantation mentality. Now, those are harsh words, but there's a better way. And it's a way that'll work. These problems have not been visited upon us by some outside force. 
It wasn't El Nino weather patterns that caused the economy <coughs> to decline. It wasn't the anchovy harvest in Peru. Excuse me, ladies, these are man-made problems. 1986, we destroyed real estate. 1989 and 1990, we put on a credit and regulatory crunch. In 1990 budget deal, we raised tax rates. We taxed capital gains as ordinary income. It is not ordinary income. It is income in which people put it at risk. And every small business, as Pete has pointed out, is a risky thing. And black, and brown, and Asian, and women, and low-income people have been shut out of the opportunity to get access to seed corn and the venture capital that's so necessary to make them owners and entrepreneurs and part of this great system. So what's at stake is whether or not we're going to have a country that's predicated upon democratic, uh, democratic capitalism or whether it's going to be based upon soaking the rich, redistributing wealth, uh, ending class warfare, and ironic as it is, the world is turning its back on class warfare at the very moment that the presidential candidate of the Democratic Party is running on class warfare, That's envy, right. soaking the rich, and I believe it must be repudiated by the American people at the grassroots level. I've been in every ghetto and bar in America. They don't want class warfare. They want a chance to be middle class. They don't want to punish the rich. They want a chance to get rich. They don't want to bring down the house of a rich man, the house of poor man. They want to build more housing, yeah. and create yeah. more jobs. Yes. platform stand for, and besides, in re-electing George Bush as our president, you'll get Jack Kemp for four more years at home.